we have we, um we got this if you need it uh, yeah exactly we got this little guy <laughs> i started it right before coming so <laughs> um what i know is that um the vtx will be connected here so that's how the um, the video is going to go into uh, out from the board mm -hmm. so like that way we can have the osd so the vtx is the video is going to be here mm -hmm. okay that's the only particular part about this board. So the video camera is probably going to be mounted about here, maybe, or where? Uh, oh, no, no that's your video transmitter. Okay. Yeah, the video transmitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're probably going to have the camera wired here on the front. Okay, sure. And we've also got this. I don't know what's in this. We've got this little header here, or you can direct solder, as I was showing earlier. Which of those do you prefer to use? Um, I would go with a direct solder. Okay. Okay. Um, if, if I was going to be honest, when I checked the wiring for this, mm -hmm. I wasn't too sure what was what, what was going on on that on, on that connector. Because usually you have this for the ESCs. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at the label. Mm -hmm. I'll have to put a graphic up so everybody can see. The label says RSSI. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be RSSI input from the receiver so the OSD can show the RSSI mm -hmm. if you're using that, which the XM Plus... I think the XM, no, the XM Plus doesn't have RSSI out. That's analog RSSI out. It basically outputs between 0 and 3.3 .3 volts. The XM Plus puts RSSI on channel 16 by mm -hmm. default. So we don't need that. Here's the bottom line. <laughs> by the way, if you have Betaflight, RSSI input can also double as the current sensor. Oh. They're swappable using resource remapping. So in theory... Well, I don't know, but in theory, you might could you might could use that wire for something else using resource remapping. The next one is S six, which is going to be signal six. I suppose this is a six. Is this a six motor? Can it do? Uh, I haven't seen it advertised as a six motor. Well, it but... says S six. If there's an S six, then presumably yeah. there's an S five. I don't see that anywhere though, so I'm not sure. We would have to actually go to the internet and look. <laughs> S six ground five volts. So that is going to be probably ground and 5 volts out because this has a voltage regulator built in. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see 5 volts, it's either 5 volts in to power the board or it's 5 volts out from the board since the board has a voltage regulator built in and it takes VBAT directly. It's probably 5 volts out for an accessory. Um, BB. It's a black box. Uh, no. But it's 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 an... Yeah. yeah it's, it's got included. built in data yeah. flash. Um well, I really feel like I owe it to the viewers to actually look this stuff up, because I don't know. Then another ground 5 volts in LED. Ground 5 volts BB, ground 5 volts LED. Well, presumably that ground in 5 volts is for some kind of an accessory device. I'll tell you what. Uh, well, I'll look it up over here on my phone. Yeah, I agree. But we've also got just... You know, I'm actually wrong, too. I thought that... I'll have to correct this. I said that the this this plug header was the exact same thing as this. It just gives you the choice. But I see now looking at it that that's not true. Mm -hmm. The direct solder pads are for the receiver, and mm -hmm. this is this here is for extra stuff. So we may actually yeah. just not even use this at all because we're not doing any of the things it does. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. So um, I've I've seen this this board. Um, with a VTX on top. That's usually how I've seen like pictures of it. So mm -hmm. maybe like you have OSD control through there. I'm yeah. not really sure. You'd need one um, more. Well, this this uh, VTX doesn't support smart audio, no, does this it? One so doesn't. this one we're going to be pushing buttons. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, great. I I don't really like these. I find these super annoying. Especially you got if you're not using it, then you got to take the wires out. I just would almost always rather solder. With micros, I've yeah. seen that a lot of them uh, they use those four in one ESC boards, uh -huh. and you will have that type of connectors. That's that makes it easy, quick. Yeah. And there's only one way in, one way out. That's okay because it's the standard connector mm -hmm. on the yeah. It's it's standard, yeah. and you're always going to be using that. Yeah, I don't mind that, but these, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so. So I'm going to show you something that you, you... Do you know about this stuff? Do you know what this is? No. This is... This oh, is... Blu-Tac. Uh, Blu-Tac. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's useful for soldering because we can just take and goop it up and then... Make things. Yeah. Now you can solder. Easy. Perfect. So, um... Yeah. So I guess you, you're going to need wires. Let me get you some... I have some 30-gauge silicon wire. 
I was going to say I might have. Um, this is the third. Did he come with any wires? Does he come with any wires? The receiver? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No. no. And we could, if we were really hard up, we could use these wires. But this is plastic insulation. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. and it burns back. It when the soldering iron burns it back, especially on small wires like this, it's difficult to strip. Silicon insulation wire also available from the Ultimate FB shopping mm -hmm. list. Uh, silicon insulation wire is very nice. So it's easy to strip. It's easy to work with. It resists heat really well. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And you don't even need the wire stripper for that. You could just use your fingernails for oh, silicon really? insulation. Oh yeah, piece of cake. That yeah. strips so easy. It's a beautiful thing. Nice. And the other thing I like to do in a situation like this is I'll take the iron and I'll set the iron down. And then I can come in with one hand with the wire, the other hand with the solder. Oh, nice. You can also, by the way, you could use the blue tack and you could put the wire on the blue tack. Some people do that, but I find this is faster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got it. Perfect. And on these, on these, um, these three wires on receivers, the middle one is always five volts. Okay. And the reason for that goes back to the days when we had servo plugs. In, you know, actual servo plugs mm -hmm. and receivers on airplanes, if you were to plug it in backwards, the 5 volts would still be in the center and nothing would break. If the 5 volts was on the outside and you plug it in backwards, you would short something. Oh, okay. It would burn something yeah, out. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So the center is always 5 volts of these three, but then you got to figure out which is signal and which is ground. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really, it's not marked on the XM+. No, plus. So and, gotta, and it confuses you with the square. Yeah. Like, have you noticed? Yeah, because usually on a, on a board like this, the square is ground. Mm -hmm. it's, it's The square is pin zero and is, is usually ground, mm -hmm. but not in this case. I'm pretty nope. sure the XM plus <laughs> is backwards. I'm pretty sure it is. This is sig it's going to be signal 5 volts ground. So. You want me to get the paper just in case? No, or? I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm pretty. And the great news is if we do get it backwards, we won't burn anything. We'll just have reverse signal and ground, but I'm pretty, sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, that that's signal because I think it's ground and I remember I'm always wrong about that. Now you can stick these through. Is that how you usually do it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, you go ahead. I usually come from mm -hmm. from the bottom. Yeah, and whichever, then however you do it. We let it flow in. Mm -hmm. Don't burn yourself. Now, when I'm doing through holes, I often will just set it on top. I'm not suggesting you should do it this mm -hmm. way, but I often don't stick it through. It's um, I don't know why, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's just how I do it, but. I mean, if you're fast and your soldering is good, yeah. might as well do it how you're comfortable with. And then make sure it stays here. We'll yeah, this is a little tin. different because we're not tinning the pads. Like we're not prepping well, the pads. Well, so. if you tin the pads, then you can't stick it exactly. through. So if you're going to stick the wire through, you can't pre-tin the pads. I like to tin the pads and press it down on top, but that's just how I've always done it. So, so let's think about this. You're going to come in, and here, I'll do it with a screwdriver. You're going to come in from the side with the flat of the iron and you're going to try and touch the metal pad and the wire together and then feed the solder in. And I would want to feed the solder in from about here, you see, so okay. it hits the iron and then melts onto the pad. Okay. Mm-hmm. So kind of halfway cover the pad with the iron and then feed the solder in. And you think you're good. Yeah, you're good. All right. Yeah, that looks great. Thank you. That looks great. So we'll come in from the side with the iron and we'll, with the flat of the iron, not the, not this, not the angle to here. That's not going to transfer heat effectively. With the flat, we'll touch the wire and the pad together. And then the solder is going to feed in. The solder is, oh, I've got to moving now. The solder is going to feed in kind of like this, pushing into the, it's going to touch the, the iron tip that'll help it melt and flow. If you just touch the pad without touching the iron tip, it's going to take a while before it gets hot enough to flow. Uh, by the same token, if you put the solder on the iron tip, how's it going to get down to the joint, right? Mm -hmm. So by sort of shoving it into the corner of the joint made, but made the meeting of them, I think that's that's how I do it anyway. Seems to work. 
somewhere out there there's a NASA soldering expert going, that's not how you nope. do it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you think we would have gone to Mars like that? And that is actually your ground wire. I mean, so what no, did we say? I think that's signal. I okay. think the square pad is signal. Okay. I'll look it up so we, we don't build the whole copter and then find out we screwed <laughs> up. Can you pass me the solder? Mm, oh, yeah, I took the solder away. <laughs> if it's more comfortable for you to not hold the whole spool, you can certainly just hold an individual little strand, whatever, whatever works best for you. XM plus... I think that's good. And now, hold on. Probably. Yeah, perfect. All right. That looks great. And here we're going to solder S bus, 5 volts, and ground. This board also has a PPM input if you have a PPM receiver. You're seeing fewer and fewer boards come with PPM mm -hmm. input. Um, more and more. It used to be that you, you had relatively few choices in serial receivers like S bus. Of course, Spectrum guys have had serial receivers forever. I know, I know. You don't don't <laughs> fill up the comments. In fact, for a long time, people said Spectrum is it flies better than FreeSky. Yeah. It has lower latency, and in fact, it did because it was serial when FreeSky was PPM. Exactly. Um, but now, even if you fly something a little bit more budget oriented like FlySky. You have choices of serial receivers. FlySky uh, IA6B does uh, does iBus. There are others. So really, at this point, I think if you if you're starting out, try to get a serial receiver. If you already have a PPM receiver, you're going to struggle to find flight controllers that actually even take PPM input. Although they're still out there. Um, but yeah, you really sh should be able to get a serial receiver. I think just about anybody. <laughs> And we have like the three volt pad, three. Yep, this port has a 3.3 volt pad, which is really nice for the Spectrum guys, whose re the satellite receivers need 3.3 volts. Mm -hmm. Many flight controllers don't have a 3.3 volt output handy, and those guys have a, they struggle to find somewhere to power their receiver. Do a lot of micro pilots fly Spectrum receivers? No. <laughs> well, I haven't I haven't heard of them. <laughs> They're out there. <laughs> Usually better fly. Well, now I think Race Flight has a smaller board. Yeah, they have a 20 millimeter board. Yeah. Nice. But that one's mostly for racing. So sure. you really won't see many three inch races nowadays. Yeah. Um, you're starting to see tiny wood, two yeah. inch. Can come at that from this side or that side? Probably come at this side. Okay. So we'll tin those pads. And then the camera is going to go in that same place. Oh, see, now you're getting it. You're going to make a YouTuber out of you yet. What are we told he put Chris? The, he, put the, he put the copter in, in, in frame. What would you tell Chris? It's like we have, we're going to start blogging all three of us. So what happened there was, in case the you put the solder on the tip, mm -hmm. but then it, it didn't transfer to, what you can have happen is that you get this blob of solder sitting up on the top of the iron. The iron is touching the joint, and the joint is getting hot, but the, the solder doesn't flow to the pad. So, yeah, there you go. So now you're sort of putting it, now just hold it, yeah, a little more. It's not quite filling the pad. You're just going to hold the heat there until the solder flows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. I would love to zoom in on this some more for you guys, but I really can. Yeah, excellent. That was great. That was great. Uh huh. And I noticed that you held the iron on it for just one half a second more. That's good instinct. That's the right thing to do. You get that solder in there, and then you just give it just a smidge more heat, just to let everything settle, let the heat flow into the joint, and then everything put it away, and everything. Does beautiful. the solder um, is it attracted to the pad? Like, well, it's attracted to the heat. Okay. Um, and that is not unique to solder. Um, it. It's um, all hot molten things. I don't know why. It's like surface tension or something. I really mm -hmm. actually don't know the actual physics behind it. People in the comments will now explain it. But if you have something that is molten, 
it will it will try to stay away from cold surfaces. It'll try to stay on hot okay. surfaces. And that's why if you're hitting the joint and it's the, the solder isn't transferring, it's because the joint is cold mm -hmm. and the, the iron is hot, obviously, and so the solder wants to stay with the hot iron. Um, I'll start here just to make... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. I always try to work towards the out, uh, towards my hand, basically. Now, how's that look? Maybe I can get it a little better. Uh -huh. I think it's a little, not quite... Uh-huh. There you go. Oh, you had it. You had it. There you go. Oh, boom. You got it. You got it. You, you got need it. to get it. That was nice. Learn. That was nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like you have a little trouble steadying your hands. Yeah. Is that just because you're on camera? I think. I think it might be. <laughs> <laughs> Making me nervous. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's good to get that exactly how you're going to want it to be. Right, so if, for example, you were to line it up like this, where it's not, mm -hmm. right, then you don't want to then put the soldering iron on and then have to push it in. So get it exactly where you want it. And if you do get to this point and, like, you notice that it's sticking out a little too far, just stop. Don't, don't rush ahead. Stop, cut it off, snip it, make it shorter, make it exactly how it needs to be. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. There you go. Nice. Nice. You got it. This guy can solder now. <laughs> He's done.